previously on ARP. I'm just tired of the world and the world being a place that is so caught up on pretenses and everything being fake, phony. Nothing's real. And that's not how I live my life. And I want to establish a platform that allows for others to understand the certainty that at any time, at any place, in any situation, you are able to be authentically who you are and to do it from a perspective of being real and know that it's so important in this very precious thing that we call life to live it to the fullest into the situation that I am letting people know that your best is in you. Letting people know that we all get out of life exactly what we put in it. Being spectacular is always and everyone knows that phrase. It's synonymous with who I am. It's not about the fact that I don't have bad days. It's not about the fact that something happens in my life that isn't worth me saying, my God. But the fact of the matter is, I have decided because of who God is, that regardless of what the situation is, I'm still yet going to be spectacular. It's my life calling to ensure that other people understand that and that they might be motivated and encouraged to live their best lives, to have a positive outlook, and to just simply be their best self. I would just tell the audience to stay tuned, uh, just knowing the things that you have in your mind, just the glimpse you've given me. There's going to be a wealth of knowledge and a dope experience to go along with it. And to piggyback off what you just said when you kind of spoke on Brother Britton, when you really think about the gifts that God has given us, it's a disservice if we don't use them. That's so, all. So it is definitely a blessing to step into that, 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 that thing of using your voice. And for the people that don't know Plush, he's a man of many hats. So you never know what you're going to get. So... <laughs> Most of the times, I don't know what I'm going to get. (laughs) (laughs) Introducing Authentic Realness. Hello, hello, Aaron R. Flush here, and I am back already, episode number two. Hopefully, you all have enjoyed episode number one. It was certainly a great opportunity for me to put myself out there, to just really have that first podcast to occur, and certainly at this point, I feel like I'm already a pro, that I really know what I'm doing. And what I want to do is I want to invite in someone else who's going to be around for quite a few of our episodes. I want to make sure that I'm presenting a platform that has multiple views, and I have a really good friend, a a mentee, former work colleague, just an amazing woman who God has allowed to be in my life that we've connected on so many levels. And Fabi's just amazing, amazing. So, Fabi, say hello to everyone that you're going to be joining the podcast. Are you there? Hello, everyone. Hi, Aaron. Thank you so much for having me. I am very excited to be here. Perfect. And on this journey, you know with me it can be a roller coaster ride. So, be ready. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all face to face. All right. So we have Fabi on, who's going to be asking questions, who's going to be a part of the discussion. And then you all know our producer, Theo. Theo, welcome back again, sir. Theo, you're there. there. What's up, brother? Good to have you on. Any reflections from episode one? A lot of good information came from episode one. I hope you guys were tuned in. If you haven't, please go listen to the playback. 
But one thing that we did establish when we did get an understanding of was the why. Why is Plus doing this? Um, so now we're going to deep dive deeper in this episode to get a little bit more information and get some more clarity. And you got a front row seat to something that Aaron R. Plus does not do is tell everybody everything. But he's, he's sharing his wisdom. So please. How in. true is that? <laughs> <laughs> and take notes. And we'll see what we got. There's going to be some gems dropped tonight. Excellent. Thank you, Dio. You have to remind me of how this is new territory for me, that Aaron Plush is telling the world what's going on in his life. This is literally the, probably the first time in my entire life, and I'm only 21, that I've actually <laughs> allowed people to be behind that curtain of who Aaron R. Plush is. And, and it's really somewhat therapeutic to be able to have this conversation and dialogue to be able to share with people what I've been doing from a corporate and professional perspective for over 20 years. And with that, tonight I'm more excited than ever because of what this episode is about. We're going to jump right in. And jumping right in with this episode, I actually have two amazing guests. And I'm going to allow both of them to very quickly introduce themselves, and they both are going to share the story of how we met, because I want you all to get an understanding of how significant and important it is when you think about those divine meetings of life. And I have come to find that in my travels around the world, I've typically always run into people that I've known from other places, which is very bizarre. I just remember one time being in Scottsdale, Arizona, my team would always laugh at me because they're like, Plush, do you know somebody in every city? And that was the one city that I said, I know absolutely no one in Scottsdale, Arizona. We're at the mall. And lo and behold, someone's yelling my name. Aaron Plush, Aaron Plush. And I'm like, this has to be a joke. And it was someone I went to college with. What are the odds? <laughs> but in this particular situation, these two individuals I did not know, very interesting situations that occurred that had us to meet, and they're going to be talking to us tonight about their journey of the, both of them being really young entrepreneurs that are just doing amazing things, and I've been able to provide a level of mentorship to both of them, as well as we've become really good friends, but I'm going to allow them to tell their story. So I have both Tan and Mark on with me. Tan, I'm going to go with you first, with ladies first, always, and just tell the audience and listeners who you are and how we met. Can you there? Hey everyone. I first want to thank God for this amazing opportunity and secondly I would love to thank you for having me on. I'm honored to be here. Absolutely. Congratulations. Have you on. You know thank what? you for sharing your space with me. Absolutely. Welcome in. <laughs> so as you said like Divine me, divine meetings is, is so important to my life since the day we've met because it's something that I absolutely didn't think was like a thing. Yeah. So I lived in the hood back in the day and <laughs> <laughs> I, I was a car salesman, well, a car mm -hmm. saleswoman at mm -hmm. the time. I, around 25, I just started my car business. I had amazing uh, amazing time doing that at the time but I brought a car for my dealership home with me and <laughs> in the morning I woke up it wasn't there <laughs> <laughs> I was very irate because before that I knew that we were supposed to have parking decals and I went to my office I did everything that I was absolutely supposed to do and mm -hmm. having a car in that particular complex when mm -hmm. I woke up that morning to leave my car wasn't there so Went stop right there, there Tane. Stop, stop right yeah. there stop right there mm -hmm. so the flip side of that everybody <laughs> So I had just moved to South Florida and my building, central downtown, three blocks from the main strip of Fort Lauderdale. 
And I decide that I'm going to do what Aaron Plush does. I just do what I want to do. <laughs> and left my car downstairs, clearly, where it says, hey, new resident parking, do not leave your car here. Well, I left my car there. And lo and behold, my car was gone when I woke up in the morning. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> As as I was getting up, getting ready to go down to the place, I just knew that I was going to flip the tow yard over. When I say that's the, I was irate. I knew what I you was were. going there for, and I knew I was going to jail when I got there. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as and, I and, and, you, there, and you came in with that attitude. And I came in with that attitude. As soon as I got there and swung the door open, there was Plush. Um, he was a little mad, but he was still smiling for some reason. Oh, hello. <laughs> so he got down there to All County Towing, and he said, you know what? They just took my car, and I got up in the morning already to go. He was dressed like he had somewhere to be. And that's all the time. Always. Always. <laughs> that's not new news. <laughs> So I said, "Oh, well, he 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 has somewhere to be. Let me let me continue. Let him. Just, no, you can go ahead. He can come. The lady, she she she's acting like she has an attitude. I know I have an attitude. So I said, don't get an attitude with me, ma'am. I'm the <laughs> one that has the attitude. <laughs> but into all of me wanting to flip the tow yard over and I knew I was going to go there and bang on the window, um, plus really comped me. And mm. we, um, I think that was the next weekend we actually had brunch and everything. And he's been amazing ever since then. Um, he told me, you know, you know, life is, I learned this word from him every time he asks me now, how are you doing spectacular? <laughs> because it's, Absolutely. I would have never met him when I did, and he never smiled when I swung that door open. It would have <laughs> been a whole nother situation. Absolutely. <laughs> and and, and, and the, the part still, to think about is the fact that had both of us not gotten our cars towed, because... You're in one part of town, I'm in another part of town, but our cars are towed to the same location, we're there at the mm -hmm. same time, we meet, and all these years later, here we are on the podcast. So, Tan, mm -hmm. tell everyone your full name as well as your business. Well, my government name is Tangela, and my last name is Pinkney, which I'm... Oh, my family's originally from South Carolina, which I learned later by having brunch with Plus, we have kind of the same background and um, the same name because my name was changed when my before my father um, met my mom. And hey, we There's have a possibility. A lot of similar we might even be related. <laughs> really, may be related for real. <laughs> so yes, tell us about your business. Tell us about yeah, you. so um, after I ended after I ended the car um, company that I've had, I've opened up Tailored and Co. I go by the name Tailored Tips, and Tailored and Co. Studios is located in South Florida. I'm very and happy about my investment, but this nail business is going to be my key to generational wealth. I really believe that, and thank God for the divine intervention because plus mm -hmm. really helped me a lot on my journey both both spiritually mostly spiritually and um business wise i thank you for that absolutely my friend and i'll tell you everyone like what i really love about you tan is that you're so much about a spirit of excellence you're so much about substance as well as style and how something looks. So for those of you that know me, you know I'm big on substance, you know I'm big on style. And those are just some of the very key similarities that Tan and I have. But I tell you just from the videos and pictures that you sent me as a mm -hmm. shop, it definitely has a plush feel. And I <laughs> totally just love the design that you've done, which just speaks to 
how much you pour who you are in your business, which mm -hmm. is so important to success. So I'm going to put a pin right there, Tan. I'm going to come back to you. Mark, very quickly. Mark, you there? Tell everybody who you are, how we met, and, and another one of my loves as to how I met you, and in turn, <laughs> we'll go from there. So tell the story, sir. First off, thanks. Thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate yes, the invite. So Absolutely. my name is Mark Voltaire, and the way me and Plush met, I believe this is 2019 or 2018, I'm unsure, but at the time I was a salesman at Nordstrom. And Absolutely. if you're a salesperson in a, in a store like that, you know, you greet a lot of people. And over time, you keep track of how people react. You get answers like, I'm doing okay, I'm good. <laughs> Some people may say, hey, I don't need any help, I'm fine. Some people don't speak any English at all. But at this specific day, it was later in the day, close to closing, and I see a gentleman walking in, and I do what I usually do. I greeted him, hey, how are you? My name is Mark, if you need anything, let me know. He says, okay, and I asked him, how are you doing? And at that moment, I knew I had something on my hands. The person said, <laughs> I am doing spectacular. <laughs> and, I was like, and I was like, whoa. Whoa. And I asked him, what's your name? He said, my name is Plush. I was like, okay. Then we began having a conversation. And then from there, I, I remember we had a little conversation about, you know, our faith or whatever. And he said something that I haven't heard often. He said that I knew I was called to preach, but not preach behind a pulpit. I was called to preach to people one-on-one. -on -one. And then from there, I was like, okay, this is something a little different. And then we've just been going on ever since. And then I remember I said, hey, like, why don't you be my mentor? He was like, what do you think I've been doing for you for the last six months? I said, okay, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> here we go. So, I mean, and I just appreciate everything. Again, it's rare that you bump into somebody who really doesn't want anything from you, but they just want to pour something into you, you know, especially where we come from. We don't really bump into things like that. So that was definitely a great experience to, to go ahead and go through. Absolutely, brother. And, and definitely, I tell you, it was mutual from a vantage point where I saw that even though you were in sales at the time, you still yet carried yourself with the spirit of excellence. And listeners, you all are starting to see and hear some themes. When it comes to me, I am about greatness. I am about excellence. I am about things being great. And the reason for that is because God has called all of us to truly walk in purpose. And our purpose is really defined by us, that we get to decide if we want to be great or not. So in that, I'd say to both you, Mark and Tan, it's just amazing to see the journeys that you all are going on. Very quick plug though, Mark, I have to acknowledge that of course, it was all about the shoes for me. Nordstrom <laughs> shoes, Aaron Plush. Nordstrom clothes, Aaron Plush. That's what I'm here for. And then that that, is God is saying, hey, you got to minister to, brother, as you're going through this process. So, Mark, tell us about your business and what you're doing. So, currently, I'm a software engineer, and I went ahead, and I'm in the process of completing a social media app. It's going to be a social media app that helps all creators and all users monetize their content, because currently, right now, a lot of creators, their only way of monetizing their content is through ad revenue, and although that model may help some it doesn't help all and especially for people who create content that's more on an intimate level who want to connect more with their audience we believe that a subscription-based model or a direct-to-consumer model will be better for that creator and it's currently in the works right now the beta will be releasing this month so i'm very excited for it and i'm excited to get the feedback from others who use it are you ready to share a name with us yet or not quite i'm yet. ready the name is, is what's the name the name is Tizzly, and it's spelled T-I-Z-L-Y. And the way we got that name is, uh, initially, we were looking at the word monetize, because that's the, the problem that we're trying to solve, monetization. So we went ahead and took T-I-Z-E, ties, and we put the suffix L-Y, which stands for monthly, daily, yearly, because we want people to be able to monetize their content whenever they feel like it at whether it's monthly daily however the case may be and then just for creative aesthetics we realized yeah the e is it doesn't give us that look so we dropped the e that's just some transparency right there 
We got Perfect. to eat, and we're here with Tisley now. But we I need Tisley that. to quickly be ready because <laughs> Aaron Plush needs to monetize what he's doing, and he will be monetizing on Tisley. So let's get it together. Go ahead, Fabi. What were you about to say? I just want to say I, I absolutely love the name. It's super creative, and it's fun. It's catchy, so I'm really looking forward to learning more about the app as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, those comments and Mark, really we're looking for the same for the listeners that they will be able to see what you have going on utilize it for those that are content creators but also for those who are going to consume that content so this is definitely a win-win situation for you Tan, I'm going to come back to you so talk to us about the opening of your studio and salon from a vantage point of what were the struggles? Like, what were those things that just were front of mind for you? That's just like, oh my God, this is just overwhelming. How am I going to make this happen? The traumatic experience of when I first signed my lease, everything was okay. Everything okay. was okay. Once I started coming in to do the work, I've painted, and after that night I've painted, I came in the next day, mm -hmm. the entire salon was flooded. Mm. Went to the went to the office and they said, "Oh, you know, you know, we're the leasing office, and you signed the lease, and after the lease um, of commercial property, it's your responsibility." Mm. So I said, okay, it's my responsibility. I will just get the AC fixed. She said, however, if the AC is completely broken, you know that you're responsible for it. Mm. So we went to looking in the prices, and a new AC was forty seven hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Definitely not. I cannot do that. Someone came to fix it, and then after he came to fix it, the towels on the floor were bad okay. because of the flooding. It bubbled okay. up. They had some type of cheap flooring. Six floors down, I had to take up all the floor and I had to do new towels. And I said, everything is like perfect. Went to get my inspections. However, the inspections in this area are a bit pricey. And okay. when went to get my inspections, everything was fine. I was ready for an inspection. I'm ready to open because I had been sitting on this space for a couple months. I've been paying rent every month and nothing has been happening. I have to wait for the inspection. Felt the inspection. And I said, you know what, God, if you didn't want me to do this, hey, you could have just said it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because these are huge obstacles. Once you saw the inspection, you have to pay to get the inspections redone. Okay. And I felt electrical. I don't know how I would sell the electrical inspection if I just signed my lease and I'm ready to work and mm -hmm. I didn't do anything electric, electrical in my space. And then I felt plumbing. It was it it, it was a it was a lot and I I believe, however, I did reach out to you during that time and you mm -hmm. said, you know what? Um, I know it could be a bit overwhelming. And mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what you're going through, but I'm going to pray for you. And I remember you sent me um, your sermon notes for mm -hmm. that day. Mm -hmm. And it just said, like, you know, you what he's never going to give you more than you can bear. I went, go, I went to go look up a couple things in the Bible, and we were in the book of Psalms, and I did read in... I read that the Lord wants me to have a marketplace. He wants me um, to have somewhere to where I can cater to people as well as lead souls to the kingdom. So this is mm -hmm. my calling. Mm -hmm. And I just have to get through it the best way mm -hmm. I can. Mm -hmm. So those obstacles, I mean, it, 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 it geared me towards, you know, when I get ready to have my own building, I'm going to know exactly what to expect. So when I walk Absolutely. into the building, I know that I need to check the electrical before I buy it, before I purchase, or before Absolutely. I have 
everything. I know everything. I wrote down everything that all the problems that I could go through now prior to me getting my next space. So perfect. It, it, it helped. If it wasn't easy, then I, you know, I probably would be a lot more comfortable here. But now I want more since I've overcome it, overcame yep. all of my obstacles. So I think yeah. I think I for that. And, and what I'll tell you, Tim, what I found in my own journey is that it, it is that whole point that oftentimes God does put more on us than we could bear for us to understand that we need him. And, and too often it's like, particularly when we're having success and things are going really well, we would like to believe that, oh, I got it. Tan has it, Aaron has it, Mark has it, Fabi has it, Theo has it. But you get to that point where it's like there's certain things and you were at that point that, look, Lord, there's nothing I can do here. <laughs> I was at Other than you. seek you. <laughs> and, and then you seeking him look at where you are now that you are open that you are thriving that you have a great customer base and that things are going exceptionally well so the thing for the listeners is for people to understand that this whole journey of entrepreneurship is not easy right. but it is one if you are passionate you're committed and you're willing to do what you have to do success will come it may not come in the form that you think it will may not come in the timeline that you think it will, but it will come. Mark, coming over to you, because I know your journey and your struggles and how you got to where you are. <laughs> High level, talk to us about your struggle journey that got you to where you are now of being prepared for beta and those type things. So, floor is yours. I think the struggle that I, that I faced was trying to accomplish something that I didn't have the skills to do. Um, mm. At the time, I was a photographer and mm -hmm. I had an idea and, you know, as a photographer, you meet a lot of people. You shoot different varieties of type of shoots, whether it's weddings, athletes, you name it. So throughout my process of being a photographer, I met a, a wide range of people and mm -hmm. I had an idea and I put together a pitch deck of the idea and I would try to pitch it to them. but. For some reason, I'm sitting there and I'm like, why am I getting the results that I'm getting? Mm -hmm. And then I remember we had a conversation. And you're like, well, people aren't really all that bought in because you don't come off as a tech guy. You don't have the skills that is needed to fulfill this plan. Mm -hmm. So that was very, very hard for me. So I, the first thing that came to my mind was in order for me to get over this hurdle, I have to go ahead and get those skills. And that's when I went ahead and signed up for a coding boot camp and learned how to code. And from that point on, I was able to go over that hurdle because now I no longer needed to pay or to raise money to get it built when I can just go ahead and use the skill that I have and build it myself. So that was definitely probably the biggest hurdle. It was a hurdle that had me stagnant for about, I want to say two years, just not having that skill. So I just kept hitting that roadblock for two years because I didn't know how to code. And then the moment I learned how to code, I immediately jumped that hurdle. And um, here we are ready to launch the beta. Absolutely. And in that, in your journey, very similar to Tan, it didn't come easy. There no. were things that you had to overcome. However, in that struggle is where you found your strength. Oh, so <laughs> in your struggle is where you found your strength. And that's the case for most of us in most of our lives. So rather than being so quick to want to be done with the struggle, we may want to begin to embrace the struggle to know that the struggle is preparing us for something. Now, the great news for you, Mark, is that you have a lot of techie people on the phone with you right now. Me being one, our Mr. Producer Theo over there, but he, he plays in the tech space as well. Theo, what do you have for Mark? Any questions for him? Nah, it's, it's, it's just amazing how we we have similar similar stories. Mine goes back a little bit further, but okay. it's just dope to hear how when you want to do something, how you just jump in and you got to like, do what you got to do. Um, and one thing that came to mind as you were stating was something that, you know, I learned when I played, played our fraternity, we sacrificed for a lifetime in paradise. A lot of times we get caught up in the journey and not think about the, the ending product or look at the 
the victory in it once we completed we're stuck in that that process but everything has a process and everything has an end point so it was dope hearing you guys story absolutely and i tell you to both chan and mark that be encouraged because i tell you you all are really just getting started but the promise that you have ahead of you just even from this conversation is quite indicative of how passionate both of you are that can you're on the side of service and, and nails and all those type things which really can springboard into a lot of different places and i do have to connect you with my barber i talked to him about it last night and mm -hmm. i'm going to connect you all about that whole teaching element that you talked about because he just got funded for his school and just is excited about that and i know there's some synergies that will happen between you all. I'm mentioning him on the podcast, though, because he will be a future guest as well to be able to talk about his story of opening his barber shop and then moving to multiple shops and now owning an actual school where he's training other barbers and doing it all legitimately to the point where mm -hmm. he's gone through being able to have the federal components of the school as well. So just beyond elated and excited for him and excited, Tan, about being that connector for the two of you. And then Mark definitely wants to connect you and Theo because I know that there are some specific synergies there as well. As we're wrapping up the conversation, because as I said in episode number one, this is not going to be long drawn out. This is going to be get into it, get to the meat of it, get off. But I am going to have both of you back when we move to that phase of video, because I'm sure both of you are going to want to be on camera and, and can, I can already see you now It'll be a competition between me and you, but I'm going to still get in just so you know. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I, I'll, no, I'll, do some, I'll do some extra yeah. effort. <laughs> but in that, what I want to do is very quickly, Tan, any closing comments, how people could reach you, any of that type of stuff, I want to make sure you have every opportunity to plug your business, what your specialty is, like what you're doing that the ladies are going to want to know about. Give us your spiel. Well, my social media handles is tailored underscore tips on all the social media. It is tailored with the I, not the Y, and tips with a Z, not the S. So um, I specialize in nail extensions. So I don't really focus on manicures, but I focus on acrylic nails. And, okay. yes, yeah, that's me. I do a lot of artwork here. And I'm geared towards teaching now, so I'm moving over my platform mm -hmm. into teaching. Perfect. and. This is this is going to be an amazing ride. I can already feel it. Excellent. Well, it was a pleasure to have you on, friend, family, just everything that you are, just loving <laughs> all that you're doing. And, and let me just congratulate you in a public forum because too often we don't do that enough. We, we don't congratulate the people that are near and dear to us and make them really know how significant and important they are. And I want you to know that you're just doing an amazing job. And certainly, as always, if there's anything I can ever do for you, don't hesitate to reach oh, out. Oh, thank you so much. Excellent. Mark, same thing to you. How so, can folks reach out to you? How do you want them to connect with you? What do you want to share? So my social handles are Mark, Volta Mark J. Voltaire. It's my first last name. So that's M-A-R-K, the letter J and then V-O-L-T-A-I-R-E. And I just want to tell everyone, it's hard to fail if you don't stop. If you never quit, it's pretty hard to fail. It may take some time, but you definitely can do it. Excellent. Tabby, I'm going to come over to you. A any closing thoughts, any things that you have for Mark, for Tan, for me, for Theo? This, this is your moment. What do you have? I just want to say I had such a great time hearing from both of you, hearing about your stories, how you were able to push through and overcome obstacles. I mean, 
just hearing from your backgrounds and where you are today, it's really, really inspiring, especially as someone who one day wants to own her own business or do her own thing. So thank you so much for just sharing your knowledge. And this has really been a really great time just hearing from both of you. And of course, you, Aaron, hosting as well. Thank you both. Thank you all. Absolutely. And I, I love that word, Abby, because I too, I'm inspired to hear the stories from both Mark and Tan is just so invigorating to let us all know that whatever it is that you set your mind out to, you can definitely accomplish it. Just be prepared for that roller coaster ride, the good, the bad, and the ugly, but know that if you really are consistent, it's going to happen. Theo, anything final from you or our guest for tonight? Uh, nothing for the guests besides thank you again for sharing your stories and allowing us into your world. Uh, but to the audience, I would say if you were inspired, let us know. Leave in the comments. Uh, tell us your story. If your story matches, if you want to inspire others, let us know in the comments and let us know what your story is. We're definitely looking forward to, to hearing your feedback so we can make this interactive. Absolutely. And don't be intimidated by me. I know I can be a lot. But, but still send your comments in and, and certainly would love to have others of you who have stories and are looking for a platform. It's my objective and goal to be the platform for everyone. And if you come with an authentic and a real story, I'm all about hearing it myself and certainly sharing it with the listeners. So what I want to do now, and, and this certainly will be something that I will do at the end of every one of the podcasts, and that's that acknowledgement that I talked about in episode one, that God is my all in all, and certainly both Tan and Mark, I know for both of you that you are Christians and you are believers, you both have attended church with me, and certainly that invite is always open for you all to do that again, but Mm -hmm. what I want to do is lift you both up in prayer, so let's go to the throne. Heavenly Father God, what a tremendous night you've allowed this to be. God, that you've allowed those divine meetings that happened many years ago between Tan and I, as well as Mark and I, to manifest, God, to this podcast tonight. God, we would just ask that you would allow their businesses to thrive, God, to thrive in a way that's even beyond their wildest imaginations, God, because I know that they both are committed to the vision that you've given them. God, I'd ask that you would cover their friends, their families, and others around them, because I know, too, that it's very difficult sometimes for families and friends to understand a journey that's a little different than what they know. If it's not that traditional nine-to-five job, that's in one place, going into one location, families struggle with that because they don't understand that the vision that you have given your two children, it's greater than that. It's different than that. But you've kept them, God, that you've put them in situations where they're always covered, even when they didn't know how they would be covered. And God, we would ask that you would continue to do that. God, thank you for allowing Fabi and Theo to also be in my life, that they too have been aligned to this particular platform. And even beyond that, God, that they've been aligned to my life, that they both are able to pour into me, to pour into the podcast, as well as to be true conduits of hope and true champions of encouraging me to keep on keeping on. Because so often, God, the person who's always there for everyone else often feels alone and often feels that they don't have anyone pouring into them. That's not my experience, that just as much as I pour into others, God, you constantly allow them to pour into me, and for that I say thank you. God, I'd ask that you would allow the podcast to continue to grow, that we would continue to know who should be aligned with this, that we would continue to have amazing and great listeners, and God, that we might have an impact on the lives of the people that are listening in. So, God, we love you, we adore you, and it's in the glorious and magnificent name of your son, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
All right. So as we're wrapping up episode number two, I just want to say thank you to everyone from the depths of my inner being that I just cannot say thank you to all of you enough. And I could not express to you how much it is significantly valued by me that all of you have truly been a part of this experience and will continue to be. To the listeners, I want to say, always remember that the best part of ARP, meaning Authentic Realness Podcast, is each and every one of you. That there is no me, there is no podcast, there's no audience, there's no listeners without you all. And for that, I want to say thank you. And then I am going to end this episode as we do every episode. And that's simply with, until next time, that's all, folks.